Hi, how's it in the name of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ? It's your girl, Cran K. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Let's hope all that is working out. Um, yeah, it is the 18th of October, 2023, and nobody really understands in my particular ecosystem why we're not yet going home. Caveat, I'm coming from an ugly background, so if I can't conceal it sufficiently enough, just remember I'm poor because I'm suffering for Christ and because my family is irresponsible. Secondly, I'm not wearing app makeup. Today, I'm going barefaced. That's good, so no need to highlight that. <clears throat> my captions... <clears throat> Thirdly, why does this always happen? <clears throat> Thirdly, my captions are um, inaccurate sometimes. Take it in your stride. I'm not removing them. I like them. I think they're cute. Um, yeah. <clears throat> They also don't have any reverence for God because they are manufactured through an application that doesn't care about God. The country doesn't care about God. China, it's cap cut, so do you. Uh, and then, so basically, like, there's always like a small G, God, a small G when I, whenever I say God. I also have um, a video editor. All right, not a video editor. What do they call this? I'm doing this because I'm very hot. Like, yeah, cha I don't know what's going on. Silence, silence detector. Uh, it takes out my words, and I'm thinking maybe you know I should just come in and talk and forget about silence detection, so all my words go in. But like, just like the captions, I like it, so we keep it. Love is hard. Moving on. Oh yes, uh, I'm rocking up with my hair and my big forehead. Hi there, cause I want to show you my protective style that I basically commenced yesterday. But I wasn't able to finish. This is what it looks like, you guys. And this is what Karaba also looks like with acne just all up in her grown. I trust the acne will fade in due season and then they'll just be this like clear skinned lady. Like that's all you're gonna see one day, guys. All of my face gonna look like that, I promise. So try and pretend there's no acne. Act like there's no acne in the room. Took a while to figure out that there's no way you could be who you say you are. You've gotta be someone else. Cause you wouldn't let face my face like that. And you wouldn't treat me like you do. You would disappear. You wouldn't ignore me. So I confess there are monsters in the house. Whatever. Okay. Cool beans, bananas. Uh, but while you're looking at the acne, look at the hair. Ooh. I love it when my hair is so fresh, guys. It's like, it's it's so lovely and so beautiful in the name of Jesus, man, you know? Yo, God gave me her. The Lord gave me good her. He gave me good her. And I would have loved if he gave me good skin, but one day all my skin's gonna look like that. Minus that. Ooh, minus that. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, there should be like uh, patches for acne that fade into your skin that enable you to hide it. Yeah. Anyway, one of these days, one of these, the one of these days, look out. Ain't no more acne. Ugh. Hyperpigmentation go. Ugh. Look, I don't actually have acne anymore. I'm actually healed. I'm just kind of waiting for this to fade. Stranger on the face And took a while to figure out and There's no way you could be who you say you are You gotta be someone else Cause of you who wouldn't slap me like that Ooh! I'm sorry, that just made me even hotter It's so hot right now And I just made myself hotter How's this even a thing? I don't understand how that's even a thing is this even a, a thing? We don't like it being a thing. Nobody likes it being a thing. But it's a thing. It's a thing. Ginto. Guys, you know, I'm sick and tired of the reviling. Um, proper. The reviling. How you gonna bad name me like that? No, you know what? Like, stop. My family treats me like trash. We all know that's cool, that's a thing. And I'm just taking it in my stride, you know? But it doesn't get old to like, you know, happen upon a phone conversation where I'm being spoken about like I'm trash. Like, you know, I really want to walk away from these people. I can't say that enough. Just South Africa at large. One day have them look at me as a parachute flying into another land on some why 
And did we treat her like this? Oh, we are nasty. We are just very terrible. Oh, we took a citizen and then treated her like a rotten inn. Oh, how did I do it? Precisely cause you took me for granted. Zancy, bolarization is you, oh, rotten like a potato. And then the rest of the potatoes in the bag of potatoes going, 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 gone, 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 just like you. Rotten. Anyway, that's what needs to happen. That's how you handle people that treat you like you ain't Jack. Jill and a bag of chips. You walk away. Remember I told you guys that I have a big forehead, right? But like, don't no man of mine get to tell me that as a joke. <laughs> That's me punching somebody nose. This guy from the US that I dated ever so five secondly, ever so briefly. Once looked at me on some, ooh, you got a big head. And I was like, uh-huh. How about a round of applause? Yeah. A standing ovation. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. You look so dumb right now. Standing outside my house Trying to apologize You're so ugly when you cry, please Just cut it out Yeah, cause just like Rihanna, I got a big forehead But I'm a pretty girl Ain't nobody in my life, no man Ever that I've been with ever teased me for my big forehead. I was complaining about that. That here it is that I'm being pockerized, treated like rubbish. Oh, scrub the bala. Some dude out here mocking my forehead like I'm seven years old. I oh, been getting mocked for this forehead since I was a child by other children on the school playground. But then I grew into it and was still kind of big, but I grew into it, and I'm saying, mmm. And then I started dating and stuff, and ever since I started dating, not even one, not even one, not even one, I ever was like, yo, I made yamnias pong, wah! And then I meet a dude in the US. I was like, I guess that's what happens in America. Dudes be finding flaws in their cheeks And then when they're done, they like, ooh ha! Oh, pizza face Ooh, ha! oh, big head Ooh, ha! oh, nappy head Yeah, dissing your girlfriend like that It must be an American thing I don't know it This pongorization of mine been walking around it all over these South African streets for a minute And ain't no bugaboo trying to get with me ever told me that I got a problem with my big head Until I dated in America That's why they are always like better the devil you know than the one that you don't know A better the devil you know than the one you don't know a better the devil you know than the one that you don't know Because a devil you don't know will diss you differently Ooh, That much rudeness in the relationship Yeah. So now that I've broken out into acne Don't know what he would have told me if I had stayed in that place Pizza face Crocodile face Like polka dot cheek Oh, eh, eh, eh From your love From your boyfriend from your fiance, you are polka dot face. Polka dot face. How are you gonna say that? I'm supposed to be your girl. I'm supposed to be your girl. Mm. Jesus Christ has shown me flames, you guys. Flames. Tukamulola. 
yeah with people of the last days in america bad taste in my mouth bad taste bad taste i mean you know when you meet one american and and then they treat you like smack you're like okay no 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 it's just one random bad representing his country don't do it you silly man don't you see americans are not all like that yeah until it happens like second time in one family decades apart i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry american men's eye something's going on there especially the ones that are not born again and so yeah the ones that are not born again no mm -mm. the majority of the planet is not born again okay the majority the majority of the planet is not born again the bible makes it very clear that Nero is the road that leads to life and few there be that find it so the majority of the planet is not saved we cannot say that at least there's the christian to do better because if the majority of the world is not born again frankly we just need even unsaved people to do a little beta in order for the world to be a beta place but america you're falling apart it's clear because in like something like three decades two let's say two girl keep it light i'm not that old i'm old but not that light that old mm. in two decades across the same family two different sisters two different like two sisters same mom same dad same mom same dad biological equivalents mm. dating american guys and they both do the same thing Yo, what's that, what's that, Lana? Ah! i just feel like america something's up something's up something's down something is sideways something is not put together um, can't write all the americans off until every american pulls a stunt that you've ever met i'm sorry nah i, I just said two different yeah my, okay i am born in a family where there is a mother was a father there is then a younger brother then there is a sister and then and the sister also all righty and then there's me that's in my immediate family my younger sister is a half sister younger brother was a half brother who passed away my dad passed away my dad went and did his own thing lived very far away from the rest of us so we don't really know what's going on with him or his son however in this household of the mother uh the women stayed the females my younger sister who was my mother's daughter so therefore she was raised with us mm -hmm. and then me and then there is my older sister and then there is the mother out of a family of four and this thing appears to be affecting chronologically based on age so tsunami very soon might just crash into the baby sister do not anticipate that because she is outlier right now only one not with this experience that it won't come because it appears to be a trend it oh, appear baby. quiet it appears to be a phenomenon that is a trend and so because it is a trend we can then trust that it's gonna happen to even the baby system if that old jesus does not come and grab the church any minute now we're gonna talk about america i never know what to talk about until i get a bright auntie yeah. i'm sick and tired right now i'm breathing heavy because i'm heavy hearted <laughs> that was a joke one minute yeah anyway i decided to do edits off camera because like i'm sick and tired of like struggling to find my bearings let me just carry on telling my story now that i was quiet for so long i don't have time to be jocose anymore mm. my mom my older sister me <clears throat> two generations of women two siblings one mom only what there's only one person that's yet to be affected but maybe that's because she's a maybe yet to have this particular experience happen to her have all been shock attacked by american men and women <clears throat> alike so with my older sister and i it was boyfriends slash fiancés slash husbands with my mom it was a boss and it appears to be that the qualms that they had with us rooted on nothing but jealousy but insecurity but uh, uh, feelings uh, delusions of grandeur given our africanness and so therefore a sense of entitlement the entitlement of their of which then caused them to mistreat all people in question because they imagined we couldn't live without them we couldn't breathe without them and so the, and so on our shores that that's just the thing that you must understand in our own backyards on our own shore 
on our own land yeah that's what's good they treated us like trash trusting that everybody else in the ecosystem is still going to kiss the behind everybody else in the ecosystem is going to melt at the accent everybody's gonna melt at the prospect of dollars and so completely ignore that we're dealing with a violently flawed character in a person and in the days of my sister and in the days of my mom's affliction my mom of which was number one to experience this thing yeah it, it, there was still a thing africans south well not just south africans i would go i would broaden it so far as to say africans period but south africa's where i'm at would just take a lot of rubbish lying down when it comes from an american and ever since this last random food rocking up now in this 21st in the first in, the first, in the, not 20 well i guess my mom it was also still with the, within now it wasn't the 21st century yet was it was it in the 90s could have been in the 90s mm. it was in the 20th century but my sister it was well within it was right now within the 21st century but about 20 years ago just at the beginning of the 21st century uh but with me it was just day before yesterday and it appears the moral turpitude has not declined nothing has changed there's been no progression of embitterment in this regard so why america is not anticipating judgment from god on high is uh, beyond me because a country herein lies the deal this is what jesus has to say if a man's ways are pleasing to the lord he will make even his enemies to live at peace with them if at all american christians um were essentially successfully standing in the gap for america he would have made the rest of america live at peace with them but right now there's a lot of strife a lot of nonsense and americans appear to be muddying everybody's walls they appear to be putting stains on everybody's carpet and it's gone to a point now where essentially i'm kind of dying because of the indiscretion of america and while i once upon a time wanted to be like no it's just one or two people and while i'm once upon a time also might have wanted uh to be like it's uh, come on like really and truly perhaps maybe just maybe somebody done eaten a bad pizza so this is what's going on now i'm starting to imagine it a trend because the persecution is quite general and it is quite ubiquitous and frankly my experiences at the hands of americans not only that american companies not only that but also the fact that i have got historical experience with americans but not being their victim has made me have quite a bad taste on my tongue concerning the u.s and made me realize why everything is falling apart the way that it is for the u.s right now everything is falling apart and not so much into place precisely because there is a pomp there is an arrogance there that is has been left unchecked for way too long and now you see the thing about injustice the thing about a disquieting mistreatment a disquieting character flaw that is observable in a person yet largely ignored because of how much people are kissing a behind the world gives no justice therefore to the victims of such people they get yeah until the lord god almighty punishes all such people until god decides to turn his back on all such people and so now all of a sudden there's like a mass exodus away from a person that once upon a time used to get away with pretty much every ounce of murder and right now america is that guy the kind of person that has bullied a lot of people in the past bullied a lot of people in the past but gotten away with it because of their strong dollar their strong country their general favor that they have from society how much they have exported culture across the world to point to the point of so many countries adopting it and so therefore the moment they happen moment they happen upon an american they're glad to receive them such that they barely ever get dealt with well as they ought to be dealt with in any ecosystem where they hurt people of that ecosystem because of the fact that people tend to not appreciate their own countrymen you know there's, there's, a, say, there's a saying in the bible that a prophet has no honor in his own hometown and so you can translate that loosely to also imply that an individual who is struggling in their own hometown tends to be largely ignored by their own countrymen an individual that is being disrespected in their own hometown is highly unlikely going to get justice from their fellow countrymen looking at this injustice because they're so used to ignoring each other it's that incredible hypocrisy that you would find for instance in parents who would treat their children's friends better than their own kids in the house 
or who would want to you know people who would try and get themselves looking good and in a neat bunch when a stranger is coming to visit their home but they would never ever clean the house for their own husbands would never clean the house would never make sure that they keep themselves in a bunch for their own immediate family and yet they are out here going out of their way bending over backwards for outsiders I've made that observation inside my own family and it was disgusting and uh, frankly unbelievable mm -hmm. but it was happening and it unfortunately also happens I've, I've made the same observation among like in a relationship where you've been with a guy for a very long time and he's kind of used to you now and then there's like new people in the room that rock up and then he's got this like fresher personality that you would much rather he wore 24 hours a day because that's the guy that you like more but he will not award you with that when people get used to you Unfortunately, you know, they don't parade you anymore. You first got to become a superhero, a superstar like Trevor Noah before every South Africa will want to name drop him. But while he's still roaming the South African streets, everybody's like, oh, whatever, that one. I know him is from this particular township. That's all they'll say. That's unfortunately, unfortunately the way that it is with a country. And Americans have been this uh, exotic gem that has been imported to very many countries across the world and have been these Americans. They have found themselves getting very well treated by the countries where they lost themselves, especially because of the export of culture that they have so successfully done using the entertainment industry. So wherever an American is at, everybody's busy loving them. That's what's good. Such that should they wear a violent character flaw in that country, people are not going to be as xenophobic against an American as they would be against if you're in South Africa as Zimbabwean. If you are in um, your, uh, what is this like, I don't know, if you're in Europe, someone from the Middle East, etc. The level of xenophobia even against Americans in foreign nations is low in comparison to the rest of the world because of the fact that they have prospered to give themselves such clout and might across the world and so everybody's kissing their behind the same thing is also true of many europeans mm. because of the power of their countries the power of their euro the power of their pound the power also of their culture that they have exported it has been so embraced across so many continents that people don't mistreat them when they're in new countries, if anything, they are given royalty treatment, which is something they should use for the glory of God. Because it's an honor and a favor that you've been given by God that you ought to use for the purposes for the purposes of God. So you should be an advocate for people in that ecosystem because people will listen to you. And when you drop the gavel, everybody's like, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The Americans have noticed this gavel, this magic gavel that they can just like wave all over the show and just be like, gah. This is the verdict. And instead of using it for humanitarian purposes, instead of using it to embetter an ecosystem they go to, some of them rock up and they're like these tyrants. They're these little animals that are beastly. And because people tend to disregard and ignore their own countrymen, their own countrymen's struggles. A South African, for instance, will suffer at the hands of an American in South Africa. And everybody will ignore that the American has committed an infraction against a South African. And the South African will scream on the rooftops and just have people roll their eyes at them the way that they've always just rolled their eyes at them. And so Americans will get away, get away with that kind of murder. That is a form of positive reinforcement of wicked behavior where you get rewarded for being a rubbish. And so because you have been a rubbish successfully in an ecosystem, there is no incentive then to do better. And when there is no incentive to do better, you then start to thrive and grow and bubble and burgeon across all other continents in the world with your bad attitude, with your mistreatment of other people, getting away with murder until there comes a time when you have afflicted so many South Africans. Until there comes a time when you have afflicted when you've afflicted so many Zimbabweans in their own country until you've messed up with so many Nigerians in Nigeria that now there is like a whole hostile thing in the world rising up against you as a nation the Lord is the one that takes up the cause of the widow and the orphan or the disregarded the individual that does not have an ear in a room when they open their mouths to talk the Lord sees the plight of an outnumbered people and so what he does is cause tyranny he causes an arrogance and a pomp 
he causes an irritating general disposition do you understand what i'm saying in the individual that is the tyrant however to a small number of people too small for that people to ever get any real justice and then he just adds a multiplier to it he puts an exponent on it he multiplies or mushrooms or versions the general issue that a certain people group walk in in an ecosystem until now action is headed towards until now hostilities are finally arrived at until now irritation is ultimately gotten to by a population as opposed to just one or two or five people that got a bone to pick with an american and unfortunately america for you you messed with a woman at the tail end of your basic getting away with murder thank you very much you messed with me and a whole bunch of people like me at a time when you can't afford to you can't afford to because now enough people are out of their minds like what's the word that i am looking for they're fed up that as a country you're losing clout and it is becoming clear that you have become kind of savage beastly salivating at the glory and the uh, splendor the virgin like uh, unused state of people in certain other countries and you have just ridden this wave and ridden it or rode it or rode it and rode it until ultimately so many people felt used by you until so many people felt abused by you that now you're losing your global popularity and so it is no longer like you're an american in afghanistan and so generally the sentiment there is not very positive about you it's not like you're an american in pyongyang and so the general uh, sentiment there about you is just you know people mostly just are not feeling you anyway you're not like an american in regions of the world where people already just for a while have not liked americans because of a myriad of reasons maybe it's a very uh, it's a heavily muslim country and so they're at odds with the christian nation that is america now you're stepping on the toes of countries that used to kiss your behind countries that used to love you when you were in the room countries that you even have started to flood to to move to permanently and lodge your body there live there because you have noticed how well treated you are in that land and you've also noticed how much cheaper it is to live in that land and also how convenient it is for you being an American the favor that you're given in those countries awards you more or less the same kind of favor that white people tend to have generally everywhere they go on the in the earth everybody just takes you in most people don't treat you like trash you don't know the level of racism blacks experience Indians experience when they're different when they're in different countries and so you can just you know travel across the world without freaking out type establishment thing Americans are much like white people that way in that a lot of nations are just happy to embrace you love you take you in their stride and that has been a thing for very many decades it has been a thing for a very long amount of time and so because it's been a thing there has been an unfortunate increase of american um entitlement in our unfortunate countries where it is that they have hurt so many of us that now you're losing your clout and you are not even realizing it because you've gotten away with murder for so long and you have allowed yourself to be trained a uh, positive reinforcement style like uh, 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 what is this um operant conditioning you've been conditioned to act a fool and a menace with no consequences and so because of that you just continue in your insanity i'm gonna tell you a story of my mom and a story i've already told it about my sister but i will recap on it today right because there was a, v a video that i did where i explained my sister's experiences yeah and then i will ultimately come to the point of my the the one american that is wreaking havoc in my life now and pretty much the others that have low-key also afflicted me based on their pomp their arrogance about the country that they're in and how as an african i just need to take rubbish lying down and also just trusting thanks to positive reinforcement of wicked behavior that despite their character that leaves a lot to be desired they are going to get away with it because you know a, a servant or a prophet or a citizen has no honor in their own home so a lot of people that americans afflict across the world get away with murder because the people that they hurt just the, their countries don't care their countries don't care enough but now they've hurt enough of us and i'm about to help you understand america why it is that you're eventually gonna get your nasty little hoof your hoof do you understand as the beast that you have become off my chest you're gonna get it off my chest because what you are doing to me making sure that i'm going absolutely nowhere you're gonna finally stop it i have said this over and over and over again you're gonna finally stop it because you're gonna wake up and realize that when you are a bully on the school playground and you are terrorizing just one child you get away with it maybe for five years of high school but if you 
terrorize all of grade 10 if you terrorize all of grade 11 or 30 percent of grade 10 and grade 11 if you terrorize all like just 20 percent of grade 8 that's when there's gonna be like a whole motion in the school to just get rid of you and that's when you're gonna either want to change your ways or just get out of the school either change your ways or get out of our countries either change your ways or let us fly like birds either change your ways or lose support global support that you used to have and absent of changing your filthy ways Nah, this time around you don't get to be a bully of 30% of the school You don't get to be bullying all the grade 11s and not have somebody Basically make sure that this menace is taken out of the school You don't get to be a little mini terrorist that everybody ignores the terrorizing activity of Because herein lies the deal You're so cute as a terrorist that people can't help but just let you get away with murder That's been you America Next part so there is a saying in this world in textbooks of sorts that absolute power corrupts absolutely while this can also apply to a nation's citizens have you ever seen in history countries that were very opulent very powerful the kinds of things that they done did the the things that they started the imaginations they concocted in their unfortunate minds their hellish souls what they conceived to burgeon from out of them have you gazed upon them i'm not speaking about the emperors here i'm not speaking about presidents about kings i'm speaking about the citizens the civilians of powerful nations my oh my what a menacing conglomerate they always have been all throughout history and a nation tends to fall apart because of a wicked and an immoral general degenerate issue in the hearts of the civilians on the ground the citizens on the ground that make up the country the hordes think for instance about ancient rome yeah ancient rome let's start with those randos we maybe might even move over to ancient babylon but let's do ancient rome all right because it is by far the most uh, uh, exported or most covered cu ancient culture by news media or let's rather say entertainment media mm. they thoroughly for the life of them imagined that because they were so opulent and so powerful and a whole empire you know that saying rome was not built in one day it comes from the fact that it once upon a time was quite the glorious beast i guess it still is to a certain extent but it ain't the, 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 it ain't jack today in comparison to what it used to be historically conquered a whole bunch of lands became rome rome oh rome here is this wonderful empire built by the sweat of one's brow like properly knuckles bleeding and everything and so now here's rome lovely and then it decides that it's gonna get slaves yes slaves mm. the emperor imagining that he gotta entertain civilians okay he gotta entertain citizens of rome with the blood of non-romans with the blood of non-romans i mean barbarism much i mean where that's just dastardly do you understand the egregious inhumane injustices and cuttings cullings of human beings like the animals of ancient rome they decide they're gonna go and grab slaves and instead of making their slaves continue to finish building their room and maybe another little building on the side or something they then are like oh i mean since we have got all this beautiful room done more or less because we didn't finish the Colosseum. Uh, let, let's take them and put them inside a Colosseum and make them fight with each other unto death. Socially condition them, do you understand? To in and of themselves feel a sense of achievement when they kill a person for sport. To a point of in and of themselves when they have won a gladiator match, cheering, cheering. That yes, I'm the gladiator that won, like yeah, proper cheering, that you have murdered somebody that you have killed somebody do you know why contact sports in 2023 does not allow murder it was because of those ancient practices that were eventually discovered by people happening upon a practice in a country to realize that oh this is kind of inhumane so maybe just leave it at boxing where you can bring a bruise on a person's face but goodness don't kill them so human beings still have contact sports which is evil out of this world out of this world any kind of fighting for any other reason but war it's just evil to fight for entertainment is ridiculous so people who are involved in boxing that industry and they still call themselves christian 
praying to the Lord God Almighty before a boxing match. Relax. You gotta quit that thing. It's demonic. The only time that you should be fighting basically unto death on earth is if your country is at war. It's the only thing that makes sense. It's if you are in self-defense, if you are fighting for yourself to protect yourself from inevitable defeat in, in like in terms of uh, per perishing if you are fighting to block your body from basically ceasing to exist that's justifiable before god but when then you just decide to go into the gym squat ten thousand times punch a punching bag 10 million times so you can one day convert that punching bag into a human being that's not sports it's something strange that is not sports it's something strange and that is why the kimang um, is a tyson a uh, rando done out here bitten a person's ear off mm. it, there is propensity for all different kinds of random stuff there are deaths that have been recorded in contact sports it's barbaric and anybody at all that calls themselves a christian and love that for a career otherwise i don't think you are okay in the sight of god but however human beings manufactured contact sports because they knew they loved to see people fight each other even though there is no war between countries that's what's good yeah and so in order to to basically satiate man's desire for violence to feed it to deal with this ravenous lust for bloodthirst in mankind they came up with a light version of what used to be entire sports of ancient barbaric civilizations that did not end at just the bruise and there was never a ticking 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 guy in the middle to give you a break so you can drink water it was fighting from the beginning to the end until somebody's heart has stopped and room was absolutely famous for that they went and they grabbed gladiators put them in the coliseum and made them kill one another unto death the movie gladiator uh yeah russell crowe is based on true events that used to happen for real mm. that's what happens when a nation gets you know powerful and they don't have anything else to do they don't have anything else to do they don't have much else i mean everybody's like you know so free everybody's dancing up and down everybody's bouncing all over the show like a bunny rabbit or a kangaroo and so because there's all this free time now they want to gather in a stadium be spectators at the bleachers over people so if at all the ancient civilization that is rome <clears throat> could watch for sport with civilians citizens moms and dads mm, regular girls and guys sitting in this environment i don't even think that there was an age restriction in rome in that uh, you know uh, violence so no under 18s yeah whatever mm. i don't even think that was a thing i believe kids also could be part of the spectacle and when then you're raising a child in that climate you, you make them imagine some people's blood is worthless some people's lives are worthless that there 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 is a shitting of certain blood that is acceptable but not of others that's where classism then just kind of rears its ugly head so they grab all these people from other countries that they have gone on right ahead to kidnap and put them in a coliseum and tell them fight unto death rome then of course because it could easily do such things right with people just bloodthirsty watching people kill each other celebrate and then eat a ton amount of popcorn so i don't know a peach in this coliseum they then were able once uh, a whole bunch of christian persecution became like a problem in rome uh, were able to just throw this you know christians in that same coliseum and just you know put a lion in there and then we're like charge the christians let's watch animals rip human beings apart let's watch animals devour let us watch ravenous beasts that we have starved for five days eat human beings and people gathered they kept the lions in cages and then uh, put a whole bunch of christians in the center of the coliseum and then just kind of let them go babies were in this coliseum women were in this coliseum and of course men in the center in this arena mm. and then they were devoured by beasts of the field yeah that you know frankly have nothing could or should not have anything at all to uh do with uh, you know being in the company of of mere mortals of human beings but here it is that a whole tiger is living among us somebody gotta feed it and somebody's flesh gotta feed it and i got no time to be hunting do you, what is this game in the wilderness to feed my tiger so i feel like human meat is good enough it'll it'll go yeah that's what people live in an opulent country that is very popular famous everybody's kind of chill relaxed they're always fat full of wine feasting drinking being merry 
a land of that nature ultimately becomes barbaric and gathers that other people's blood is worthless enough for them to be devoured by lions in the Colosseum, enough for them to fight each other unto death in the Colosseum, enough for them to make out of this a sport. That's what's good. So the innovation of movies like The Hunger Games is not lent from some woman's Im hard knock imagination as you know as to how far we can think about the wickedness that can happen on this earth it is based on historical events where indeed people were put in an arena and it was kill or be killed kill or be killed and it was a fight unto death a mortal combat between people not countries who are at war just regular people that they took from their houses measured their muscles and then put them in an arena and now we've got the sport that is boxing. Right now it is apparently just entertainment. But if you look at modern civilizations that are popular or famous, just like, or powerful, opulent, just like America, they operate very similarly, their citizens, their civilians, to ancient civilians. They, they are bloodthirsty for what they imagine to be inexpensive blood. The blood of Africans, the blood of people that are not American, the blood of people that is not red, blue, and white. And so we can just, you know, do whatever we want with them. And when then we make an observation of how our country is entertaining us, like an, a Roman emperor, entertaining civilians, carnage. The American government is entertaining its own citizens with carnage of other people across the world. And it has been a sport. And so far, they've gotten away with it, just like Roman civilians, all right, to just watch all this rubbish. And in the run-up to character has just been filed away at. Actual compassion for human sorrow has been filed away at. Humanity has been filed away at. Moral turpitude has skyrocketed. And searing of consciences has been a general thing. It is no wonder in the last days it's written in God's word that people will be marrying, being given in marriage, just going on to be merry doing whatever they have always been doing all along and not be perturbed by all the other carnage happening around. I, for instance, right now, am gazing at this hot mess of a planet and I'm grieved by everything I see. I'm grieved by the war in Israel. I have been grieved for a very long amount of time by the war in, in the Ukraine. I am grieved by all the sorrow of uh, starving souls in especially Africa. And I don't understand how people can just look at sorrow and do nothing. And largely this has been magnified in me because of my own sorrow. And being now on the receiving end of global apathy, I am feeling really very some kind of way about the nasty state of this world to a point where I can't believe that anyone at all is able to just carry on and live normally when there are so much other sufferers, so, so many other sufferers in the world. I don't know how they can do it. But according to the scriptures, that's exactly what is the case before the coming of the Son of Man. Now, if you think about the description of what's going to be all of the things that will happen before the snatching away, the Lord says that it's going to be like the days of Noah. And what, are the, what were the days of Noah like? The thoughts and intentions of mankind, it is written in God's word in the book of Genesis, were evil continually. So if the thoughts and intentions of mankind were evil continually, they therefore must have been doing some pretty abominable things. Meaning that daily sightings of carnage was just a thing. And yet strangely, people were still marrying, being given in marriage, doing whatever it is that they're doing anyway, la di da. Cause now my blood, right? Is expensive my blood is expensive in comparison to the blood of the next human being right next door to me and so I can successfully just go and get married at a celebration of this nature while there is someone living right next door to me and do absolutely nothing or feel no kind of way it's it's business as usual it's life just continuing as normal not only is that an issue with thoughts and intentions of ma mankind being evil continually but there is a great apostasy. Now, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, according to Galatians 5, are love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, long-suffering, self-control, goodness, and faithfulness. Against these, there is no law. However, the fruit of the sinful nature, I am going to name but a few. I, I don't think I'll put... I'll fit all of them in because I don't know them off by heart the way that I know the fruit of the sinful nature, but they involve sexual immorality, impurity, dissensions, envy, uh, strife, discord, orgies, drunkenness, 
uh, wild parties, debauchery, things like these, D jealousies, fits of anger. These are the fruit of the sinful nature. So if at all, there are fewer people walking in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, gentleness, peace, kindness, long-suffering, self-control, goodness, and faithfulness. And against these, there is no law. If there are fewer and fewer people walking in this in the last days, because it has been predicted that many people will fall away from the faith. And if you fall away, you magnify in what? The fruit of the sinful nature. So essentially, there is more of an increase of what? Fits of rage, of jealousy, of envy, of covetousness, uh, sexual immoralities, orgies, things like these, dissensions. I could go on. So if there is an increase in all of these things, it means there are more and more sight things by regular Janes and Joes in these streets of um, immoral just immoral or immorality on the earth at unprecedented levels meaning that it's like Sia on a chandelier I'm gonna swing on a chandelier on a chandelier 24 hours a day and everybody is just literally making like the religion of the Lima doing what thy wilt for that is the whole of the law and when more and more people are doing whatever they want to do disregarding law and order nations are starting to look therefore more and more like the movie the purge where crime is legal never mind for one night in a year but two 365 days a per annum perhaps 24 hours within those 365 days as well uh there is no body being restrained other than those that have still got the self-control and being restrained by the common grace of God alongside the Holy Spirit who is here. So we are blocking or preventing the mushrooming of, of human humanity into dangerous dizzy heights of nastiness. Mm. God ubiquitously by his common grace and people's general self-control that is still somewhat operational in some even though they're not born again but in dwindling measure because the scriptures made it clear that the Christianity towards the end of the age is going to make like a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis it will tend towards zero but never quite hit the x-axis in the sense that there will never really truly ever be in any given time in history no christians on earth but at the end of the ages there will be such a small number that there will be asymptotal and asymptote is an uh, um, a graph an exponential graph plunges or increases next to the y or the well, a horizontal one is on the x-axis and so it declines but it never ever intersects the x-axis the x-axis nor hits it and so therefore reach the very the the, the 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 figure that is zero it never reaches zero it gets real close however to zero it just tends into infinity and to zero christianity in the last days is going to be as in total and to eternity the big revival will cause a slight rise after the earth at large after the rapture happens but the majority of the world will still be antichrist ungodly and now they're going to be so violent that they're going to be madly and hugely disincentivizing to people to turn to jesus christ so there's going to be an almost f a near on flat line of life on earth in other words true life eternal life but the intervener to prevent such a thing as that from ever happening is Jesus. He's going to return with his second coming. But Christians will have been massacred. They will have been butchered. And those that remain, the few of them in the corners of the earth that are hidden like rodents in piping, in tunnels underground, etc. They will then be captured in the last reaping mm, to meet the Lord in the air and then come down, landing on the Mount of Olives is our Lord in the second coming to rule and reign for 1,000 years with the body of Christ. But before then, there will be an exponential decline of true faith of Christians to a point of reaching a horizontal asymptote asymptote in terms of the numbers that keep getting saved that will be maintained on the earth, never really getting to zero, but coming real close. Given the asymptotal nature, therefore horizontal asymptotal nature, horizontally asymptotal nature of uh, virtue on earth, you can trust, therefore, that the general observation by the lay man and woman on the street is of pretty much what was going on with ancient civilizations who could buy a ticket to a match of watching two people killing each other and then go home and still change the baby diaper, go home, still hug the husband, go home and still make dinner, go home and still sleep, go home and still eat. 
the world is going to get to a place where law and order is pretty much as loose and as flaccid as it used to be in ancient civilizations that never were guarded by international law countries back then or nations or empires were like pariah states that could do whatever they wanted so it was possible on the earth to have entire cannibals in a nation it was possible on earth to have entire massacrings of people in broad daylight for sport in a nation because they were within themselves running under principalities and there was no uncle sam there was no body grabbing big brother looking at them surveilling their activity being like this is um a horrible deed as a country that you are doing and so therefore in order to punish you we're gonna sanction your land mm. nobody would sanction was busy sanctioning rome for their barbarism nobody was busy sanctioning ancient babylon for their barbarism nobody was doing that so everybody was pretty much like kim jong-un in north korea some people aren't eating others are so what who cares it's just the way we run our country you want to sanction us it doesn't matter we have independent ways of operating underhandedly just like a black market operation that is selling diamonds we're gonna do things our way like frank sinatra we've come a long way since then we have indeed come up with bodies that govern international behavior so that when people fall out of line they get sanctioned Mm. But then you get a city president in the United States of America setting free six billion such funds to a nation that shortly afterwards went on right ahead to sort of kind of boost at the injection, I would imagine, of some terrorists that went and, and gnawed away at the toenails of Israel, otherwise known as Hamas fine those funds were not yet used we get it but american leadership is busy making excuses saying that no ever since we released those funds that by the way belong to them and not american taxpayers those monies haven't been used and we're surveilling those monies to make sure that they do they use them just for, for, for the benefit of the civilians on the ground taking children to schools and building playgrounds and not so much funding a terrorist gun machine but that's just the issue why in the world are you releasing six billion or two the biggest state sponsor of terrorism in the world america you are judged is that basic i've been saying it like you cannot stick with israel because you are a hypocrite and violently lukewarm but you know let's continue to make that argument lest people should feel like they were not warned in advance before the lord does anything in an ecosystem he will let his servants the prophets know so here in lies your warning america this is gonna happen and when it does you're gonna be like oh snap who'd have thunk it didn't think that meager lowly no brainer rando in south africa would actually have fulfilled prophecy happening that came from her mouth because she was one of those cheap bloods mm. one of those who's upon her blood getting gushed out on the street it's just gazed upon by souls on some wow that was a nice match to watch anyway so what's for dinner mm. i'm in a hunger games arena now i am in the coliseum now that was ancient rome absolutely barbaric many more such practices were, were done there i shall not highlight them ancient babylon well i mean they're the dudes that went and threw daniel in the lion's den i could go on things that are just inhumane punishments for people that would never fly in 2023 never fly in 2023 in any democratic country or any country that has any trade relations with any other country you're gonna have to be bongo bongo land or some country that is disregarded on the earth altogether or maybe like north korea a violent pariah if at all you if at all you're gonna do such strange things to your own civilians however if at all you still fall under international law you're gonna have to keep yourself in a bunch and nobody wants to be told quiff current but if you're living on a planet where more and more states are legalizing purge laws much like america mm, where certain crimes are so petty that you allow people to do them under a certain price tag like a thousand dollars in south african terms at present last time i checked Mm, was about a thousand eight hundred rands a thousand eight hundred rands of which can feed for an entire month one person living by herself okay in an apartment yeah it's groceries for an entire month in south africa yeah but according to the u.s it's okay if somebody goes and you know just kind of cleans woolies out shops in jefela once a month since you know i lost my job so what i'm gonna do is just go to woolies and grab a thousand eight hundred rands worth of groceries and just walk out 
and just walk out. I just need to make sure that it's just under, just under 1,800, maybe 1,799 rands. And then just go and sit in my apartment and be like, whoo, I lost my job, but at least I get to eat because I walked into Woolies and Woolies staff were not allowed to apprehend me. Nobody was allowed to talk to me. I was supposed to just walk away. And if at all I get hurt, in this experience um i'm then going to be pampered on my shoulder because frankly our prisons are too full to be putting what they call petty criminals that steal stuff under 99 dollars 997 dollars or whatever is that amount i would love that one thousand dollars america give it to me i'm struggling i'm suffering i need to go and see a dermatologist put that money to good use instead you're giving it to criminals letting them fly free purge laws instructed in your nation instructing in your nation criminals to just do what they will for this is the whole of the american law mm. you are looking very much like ancient rome however nobody is out here trying to sanction you america are they for your purge laws that have terrorized civilians on the ground that are not interested in theft that are not interested in walking to a Walmart and having next to them in their grocery queue, in their line, in the grocery aisle, where they're at some dude that's just grabbing some orange juice and walking out. There are people who are terrorized by this activity, and yet you don't care about those civilians. So essentially, some people's blood is cheaper than others. You started to look at things that way, and now that moral violence is spilling over, given that you're a whole global superpower that can't be told anything. Your purge laws have created a society of crazy randos all over the show that are roaming these streets afflicting innocent South Africans much like that little menace that you set free out of prison that is now the bane of my uncomfortable existence let's move to the next part